Hello world, welcome back to Golf Subpar. Colt knows Drew Stoltz. You might notice if you're watching on YouTube, we're in a little bit of a different studio. Having a little little, little changes made to the studio, Salise. A little construction. We're ramping that thing up a bit. This feels right though. Conference room, big decisions. That's what we do. We make them. Very good point. You know what I mean? IPOs, stock exchanges, all that stuff. All the ins and outs. But a very exciting week in the game of golf. Jordan Spieth picks up his 13th PGA Tour win, which we'll get to in a second. We also got some other exciting news to get to. We got a new sponsor, Sleep. Yes, the boys over at Tag Hewer. Shout out to them. Bring your golf rounds to the next level. Are you passionate about golf? Well, Tag Hewer is setting a new dimension in watchmaking through cutting edge technology with the newly released Connected Caliber E4 Golf Edition. Swing detection and shot distance tracking, interactive maps, smart scorecard. The Tag Hewer Connected Caliber E4 is the high performing companion to any golfer who wants to take their game to the next level. The Tag Heuer Connected Caliber E4, together with the Tag Heuer Golf App, is the ultimate companion for on and off the golf course designed for performance, ready for everyday life. Visit TagHeuer.com slash golf to learn more. It's like having a track man on your wrist, then you go to the bar and you got a tag on your wrist. What's better than that? It's incredible. Mm. We need a little uh, sleazy tracking device put in there. Find me yeah, when I'm out there. I get lost. A few too many transfusions. ADD kicks in a little bit. Hey guys, how you yeah. doing? But go pick up your tag here. You got to have something nice on your wrist. Got to have a piece at my, all times. Mine's empty at the As moment. I don't have one right now, mine's but I will. Empty. It's my tag. It's available. Okay. It's all good right. Score. Well, let's get to Jordan Spieth and the RBC Heritage out there at Harbortown. I was on the call, had Jordan Spieth's group Sunday. And uh, I mean, has there ever been a more backdoor win? When he finished on the 72nd, I was like, that's an awesome finish. That's going to be just short. That's probably one shy. Lowry pars in. He's got this thing done. It looked like his at the moment. But there's tons of people right there. You got to figure one or two of them are making a birdie, a couple birdies coming in. And then at best, I thought this is a three-way, four-way playoff. If it's a piece of a playoff at all, there's going to be multiple guys in it. Sure enough, Eric, you know, what happens, happens. Cantley's the only one that makes a move. Birdie's the 71st. And then all of a sudden, playoff with one guy. At that point, I was like, this is just a Jordan Spieth moment this is going to be the one he there was there was quite a few guys that let it get away obviously shane lowry when he chipped it in the water on 14 sep straka making bogey from the middle of the fairway i mean harold varner had a number of chances but i got this from one of the gambling guys out there as we were getting ready for the playoff and i wish i would have seen it so i could have said it on air but jordan spieth had a 0.8 percent win probability when he stood on the 18th tee in regulation okay hmm. when he finished it was up to 5.7 percent okay so Still he, not high. He, well, he, when he made the birdie on 18, he was one back at the time. And then right after that's when Lowry made the double. But 5.7, you could have got made some nice cash on that if you'd have thrown a little live action in over at FanDuel. Does that happen to anyone but Jordan? I feel like just the stars align some way. He works his way in there. He's coming off the little oopsie-daisy on the final hole of the third round there. And you're like, well, it's just those are things you can't do and still win golf tournaments. Sure enough, Jordan gets it done. And he got it done, dude, without his superpower like the putter the short game was awesome all week he was holding bunker shots all over the place it felt like but ball striking was how about this little stat speaking of stats so he finished the week minus 2.55 strokes gained putting so he's losing that is the worst strokes gained on the putting green for a winner since 2009 our guy sean o'hare no surprise sean o'hare can win and like shit Price is a battling battling that uh, shower injury at the time, so understandable. Wrist was probably <laughs> acting up that week, you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, Jordan ended up getting it done. It was awesome. First win as a father. Little Sammy was there. I got to hang out with the family all week, um, which we'll get to here in a little Did bit. Did you tell him, oh, my God, you, you are the chosen one? Yes. I was like, this kid has no touch idea. Touch me. Touch Let me, Let me tell you what TSA and security lines are like. <laughs> you know how many ounces you yeah. need on a carry-on? You'll never need to know, bud. Don't worry. But – what a, I mean, it's great for golf when Jordan Spieth's playing well. I mean, he is a guy that everyone follows. He's an it factor. You know, a lot of people were hating on me, which I don't make the decisions. They were hating on me that I was following Jordan Spieth on Sunday because, you know, he, son of a he, bitch he made a couple are. bogeys there early, and he's two back. All of a sudden, there's all these guys around it, and they're like, are you really going to stay with him? I'm like, I just go where I'm told. And lo and behold, <laughs> good thing I did because he's the man who ended up having if the trophy. If he's anywhere near on a Sunday, just it, hang yeah. around, dude. There's going to be a bunker shot hole. At this point, do you think you'd rather have a 35-foot look uphill on the greens or a relatively easy bunker shot, straightforward green to work with? Because I I don't think I can remember anybody that I've watched in a long time where when he has a straightforward bunker shot, I'm like, this is probably going to take a look. Well, I think Nance said he's at before the win this week. He had won 12 times and two of them were with hold bunker shots. Yeah, it's just like I just start and it was happening over and over this week. I was like, and the win on 18, even with the with the messed up stance, left foot out. I was like, with that lie, I was like, this thing's cruising up there somewhere tight. There's no way there's anything but four, maybe well, three. It is time for the doers cheers moment of the week, which it's going to be Jordan Spieth. 
But first, I got to tell you that we are proud to announce that Dewar's is the re- presenting sponsor of Subpar and the official Scotch whiskey of the 122nd U.S. Open at the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts. Discover Dewar's remarkable lineup of Scotch whiskeys, most notably their 12, 15, and 19 year old limited champions edition, developed in partnership with the USGA. I'm pretty sure our guy last week, Michael Allen, tried all those. Without question. Dewar's is the perfect after round indulgence, extraordinarily smooth yet complex. Enjoy Dewar's double aged Scotch whiskeys any way you like. Be it neat, on the rocks, any whiskey highball with a twist or a classic old-fashioned. Like I said, it is time for the Dewar's Cheers moment of the week. And we're going to go back to Saturday, RBC Heritage. Here he is, Jordan Spieth, which 99.9% of you listening at home probably picked this putt up after he misses a 12-foot birdie putt. It, they said 18 inches. I think that was stretching it a little bit. Every Goes inch up counts. there, kind of one-hands it, kind of one foot, slaps it. Yeah, just slappy. Shoe, taps it in. I had dinner with him that night. Go over to the How's house, feeling? and it was one of those ones. It was um, him and his wife, Sammy, Justin Thomas, and myself and JT's parents. And it was one of those ones you're just going to let just Jordan bring it up, right? You're not going to bring it up. And so it was getting towards the end of the night, and he's like, man, I just cannot believe I blacked out over that little putt. And Justin, smart ass, goes, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about it. And he's like, and, and that's when Annie, he gave Annie a lot of credit. Annie chimed in. He goes, listen, tomorrow – Every little putt, just take five seconds, count to five before you go in and hit it. And he said he did that and ended up working pretty well. He still didn't putt that great, but he didn't miss any little ones. But for him to bounce back, I thought was really incredible. Why is it coming up clutch these days no in the kidding. pet talks right now? And how about, did you see the when they slid the jacket on him at the end, they announced oh him God. as Justin Spieth. So uh, that will only never die if you're Justin Thomas. That's just, If he had to be watching that, like, thank you. Thank you, big fella up there for blessing me with this because that's going to linger for forever well justin did tweet he said i want to thank everyone for my 35th place finish <laughs> like, yeah, thanks really guys thanks it. for the jacket but man that's it just shows you how mature jordan spieth is i mean he, at dinner that night he was like man if this if i lose by one like i'm gonna i was it. thinking that was what's gonna yeah. happen when he finished i was like he's one shy for sure somebody's getting to 14 there's too many guys out there close they got the par five coming in at best like i said i think it grabs a piece of a big playoff nah all right, well, let's get to our guest this week because he is an absolute beauty once again. We're two for two with just absolute degenerates. They're hilarious, a lot of fun. It's, this is an extremely long interview. We're not even going to tell you anything about it. Here's the legend, Mark Grace, on Golf Subpar. If he's not your favorite baseball player already, get ready to have a new one because this dude right here <laughs> is the man. He's a World Series champ, three-time uh, All-Star, four-time Golden Glover. The man himself, Mark Grace. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well, Stoltzy. How are you, pal? I'm fantastic. Good to be with you What's again. What's going on, Cole? Thank this... you so much for having me. I was telling you guys out in the parking lot, I see how I've I've done a little due diligence, and you guys are you guys are killing it on this podcast. Congratulations. And you also have officially made me a little nervous. Oh, wow. So, wow. That's so the biggest just, compliment just you could know, get. You even brought your own notes. I did. <laughs> I did. I don't, wanna, I don't want to miss out on a good story. <laughs> Our first guest to ever bring notes in. Yeah. 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 Tommy, I feel like, was the guy that would probably prep like that, too. (laughs) Well, hopefully. uh, Who? Commodore. Mike. He's a former hockey player. Former hockey player. Yeah, he's a member at The Rock. No big deal. Is he? Yeah. I haven't played with him. You'd like him. He only plays with good players, I'm sure. Y'all would have a good time together, I promise. That would actually be. (laughs) I I do love hockey players. That should be an arranged marriage right there. Y'all would get along (laughs) just fine. Well, before we get to the baseball, I think we should start at golf. Because I think there's mm-hmm. much fewer stories in the in the golf world for you, okay. but seven handicap, right? Whis- a, whisper yeah, up. yeah. You know, I'm a guy that'll shoot anywhere. On good days, it'll be high 70s. On average days, it'll be in the low 80s. But you know, you guys have forgotten more about golf than I'll ever know. But I love the game. I love playing, and. As I told you earlier, I'll hit some shots where you'll be like, ah, you know, Gracie's got some game. And I'll also hit some shots where you'll be like, what the fuck is he out here for? Yeah. You know, and and that's that's been my game for about the last 15 years, and, and I'm okay with it. Slee's got to see it up close and personal. I personally. saw yeah. the, the entire spectrum on the first two holes of the member member <laughs> last week. I'm putting my brother, I'm like, so we're getting Gracie in the third match in the afternoon. This could either be the best time in the world to get him or the worst time in the world to get him. I don't know. And he goes out on the first hole, a couple good swings. I think he makes four for three. We're a quick one down. I was like, shit, it's the worst time to get him. Second hole, par three, playing like 170. He gets up first, and I'm not shitting you. How far behind the ball? Did, I mean, it was seven inches It was a the seven ball. iron. It was a seven iron, and it was at least, contact was at least seven inches behind the ball. <laughs> Just the, seven? The tee oh, didn't move. Yeah. The divot was like seven yeah, inches and, behind it. It was almost I'm impressive. You, the ball, 
you know, back in the old days, the old dick out rule. Yep. It was, it was, it, we almost had it. <laughs> Fortunately, there's no ladies' tees at Whisper Rock. That's so, a good point. Uh, so I didn't have to. They hit right it. into the curb of the car path and popped up in there and it netted, went six yards maybe. I put it in my pocket and bad said, let's ca- go. Bad caddy, and he didn't tell you it was six <laughs> yeah. yards to cover the car path. <laughs> I know, that was a shit move. Uh, but you've got to do some pretty cool things in the game of golf because your baseball career, one being playing the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro Am right. alongside Bill Murray, Jeff Sluman. And Scott, Scott Simpson, Simpson, former U.S. Open Eight winner, times, yeah. correct? Uh, seven or eight times, maybe more. I'm not sure. Uh, Did you ever Bill make the cut? I actually, uh, yes, plenty of times. And I actually got most valuable amateur. Wow. One year in the early 90s, I got most valuable amateur. Uh, I was playing. Do you remember? Um, the you, remember, you remember a, uh, a player named David Edwards? Yeah. Okay, David Edwards and I were put together before. Sluman and I got together, but uh, David missed the cut that year. And uh, David and I as a team, the, on Sunday, he basically is, is picking oh, up his ball. That's a nightmare for a pro. Oh, and, and, I, and I knew Your that. Your team makes the cut and, and you don't. That. Brutal. I, Colt, I knew that. <laughs> and I could tell he had about as much interest in that Sunday round as as I did in going to the dentist's office. And... Uh, <laughs> And I mean, that sucks. But, but I but I had a I, I had a good day, and he actually. So anyway, I I, I finished runner up to Payne Stewart and his brother. Payne Stewart and his brother were a wow. team. They won it. Beat us. Beat me and David Edwards by one stroke. And David missed the cut. So wow. So I, good playing. I used to be a pretty good golfer. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to play That's alongside NBA. Bill Murray. Yeah. Oh, I mean. First, I'm him being the big a Cubs fan as he is. Yeah, I'm and, sure y'all had a great well, relationship. The, the only reason I got invited was because Bill. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm they're not. Hey, <laughs> the, you know the Pebble Beach people are. Oh, let's, we got to make sure we get Mark Grace in this thing. No, Bill. Bill went to bat for me, got me in there, and you know when when you're when you're with Bill for a week, I mean you're invited to all the big shop parties. Your 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 galleries. Are bigger than Tigers were. You're, you know, and even Nicholas was even playing back in the early '90s. You know, in in that tournament, and the gal. Now, now, mind you, Bill's galleries are huge, but you know, Bill's a funny guy. So, so everybody, you know, you're you've got a you've got a three footer for for you know that's important. And right when you're taking your last look at you, hey Bill, gunga la gunga, you know, and, and, or, or hey Bill, you gotta give her the Aunt Jemima treatment, you know, like like people are always screaming out at Bill, you know, to mm-hmm. to or and Bill's one of those guys he didn't have to even say anything and people will laugh, yeah. you know, especially up there at Pebble Beach. So, it, like I said, he just. He abuses people up there. Yeah. Like, just lets them have it with, with with his wit and his humor and how quick he is. You know, hey, Bill, how about an autograph for an old lady? And he'll go over there and he'll, and, and he'll look down. And he's like, my God, you are old, aren't you? Like, <laughs> like how old are you, a million? Jeez. And like, he just, and, but everybody just everybody loves, loves him. Everybody loves him. You know, they, they, don't, they don't take offense to it. Mm-hmm. And it was... And, and and you get to play, you know, that was back when Poppy Hills was part of yeah. the rotation. And, uh, you know, I, I listened to all the pros bitch about that, about the, <laughs> that course, but uh, it seemed plenty good to me. Now, one last story about this. So you, you guys remember number one at Poppy Hills, right? Well, they've yeah. redone it, but I played Poppy. I don't remember what it was. Okay. Way back though. It's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty semi lengthy par four that goes to the right you know you drive it out there dog leg right now they they've changed it might be different than mm. than i'm older than you colt but <laughs> so it's kind of it's a it's a semi tight drive and you know you don't hit drive right so i had a three wood and i miss it a little bit just into the rough on the left now if you miss it left your second shot because it's a dog leg right if you miss it a little bit left your your second shot's a little further you guys obviously know so i've got like 195 to the pin, and I yank out, yank out a four, and it's a downhill, a little bit of a downhill shot, and just happened to hit one on the screws. See, I'm one of those guys, I always take one more club and play for the play miss. Play for the miss it. That's yeah. You can help out a lot of people. That's a veteran and, play. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. I've been, I've been told that yeah. a lot. So so I happen, to, I happen to nail one, you know, right in the sweet spot, and I'm looking at it, and it is, it's looking good. It's a good-looking shot. I'm like... My caddy's going, oh, man, be right, be right. I'm 
you guys know Bill Murray crowds and Pebble Beach crowds, there's people sitting around the green. Well, I fly the green by, in the pens in the back, I fly the green by about, you know, 15 feet longer, the pen fly it, and it's into the crowd. And I have hit somebody. Bang! And the good news is it kind of kept the ball right there. You know? <laughs> but so I get up there, I get up there, and I see, and there's this, this woman, she's crying oh god and i have hit her first hole i have first hole yeah and i've hit her in the ankle i've hit her in the ankle come to find out it was the chairman of at&t's wife and that was that was the big sponsor of the the pebble beach so i just was basically like well i'm playing my last round here at pebble (laughs) beach and i'm done well anyway get invited that night to a party with bill and the the chairman of at&t and his wife are there and she's wearing a freaking Boot. boot. Oh, we're in a walking boot, and I'm just like, oh God, make I'm me so feel sorry. worse. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. So, so if I'm around, folks, uh, you know, stay in your house, please. Don't get hurt out there. <laughs> the chairman's <laughs> wife. Yeah, of, chairman's, all the people, of all the, the people. first hall, I couldn't got to be rattled as shit the rest around. I couldn't hit some fat bastard or anything <laughs> like that. I got, or just I, a, I, just a I, guy, maybe. I hit not a, a really woman. important lady. Exactly. <laughs> the most important lady on property. I'll hit her on the one good forearm you you ever hit. Exactly. On property. That's Actually, to flush it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you obviously played Pebble. You played a number mm-hmm. of great places, including Augusta National. Right. I heard you had quite the adventure your first time there. First hole, maybe with the caddy. Oh, you know that story, huh? This is interesting. We uh, do our homework here at first Sub Park. First hole debacles. Now, mind you, <laughs> my, my first time I've ever been to Augusta National, you know, my my heart was beating out of my chest just driving up through there. And then uh, the back, back in the early 90s, maybe even late 80s, whenever it was, I think it was about 1990, you know, times were different. You know, it was... It was still, uh, you know, it's still every caddy on the on the was African American, uh-huh. and you know every locker room attendant and every, you know, anybody that worked there was was African American. So I'm, um, on the first hole, and my my caddy is a guy named I think his name was Johnny, and he was he was a middle aged gentleman. He was probably in his fifties. Now I'm in my twenties at this time. And I, you know, you know, number one at, at mm-hmm. Augusta, got it, got it on the green in two, and I've got about a thirty footer, and like I said, you you guys know, and I'm, I'm like, I'm like Johnny, I've got I've got this about uh, a cup out on the left, thirty footer, and he says, Mister Grace, he goes, you put that ball a cup out, you going off the green, <laughs> I'm, and I'm played plenty of golf yeah. this time. I know how to read a green. Yeah, you know, I'm like, well, Johnny, are you sure about that? And he says, he looks at me with this stern look, and he says, Mr. Grace, I've been here an awful long time. And I said, and I knew that because his claim to fame was he carried Gay Brewer's bag when Gay Brewer wow. won the 67 Masters. Wow. So, so he has been there So for he was a while. like a god out there. So he there. definitely knows he, more than you. He's got, thank you. <laughs> yeah. you got the best dude on <laughs> yeah. property. So, and he and he goes way up, you know. He goes, Mr. Grace, you have to put this ball up here, and to the point where I have to turn my back to the hole. And the very first hole I'm playing at Augusta National, I've heard about these greens, but now I'm actually going to have to experience them. And I putted the ball where he told me to put it, and I didn't see it, guys. I didn't see it. There was this subtle something in this green that started taking my ball down to the hole. That trickle, trickle, down to the hole, down to the hole, and I put it right where he told me. And I mean, eight, ten inches away, tapped in my par, and I was just like, Johnny, I'm never going to argue with you again. <laughs> I didn't see that, guys. It was I, my read was probably 25 feet. That's it. Off. So, so now he told me, Mr. Grace, now drop one and put one a foot, uh, a, a cup out, see what happens. Sure enough, I felt like I put it. Pretty good stroke on it, and this other subtle hill that I didn't see. <laughs> and you know, number one, mm-hmm. if it goes off the green, you're going 40 yards down. Yeah. You know, and so, by listening to him, I made a four. If I would have putted it where I thought, you, you know, might I'm still be easily there. making six. <laughs> and then on top of that, I said, okay, I'll never argue with. And then, he said, and then he made me go get the ball. That's he fair. made That's me fair. walk all the way yeah. down there and get the ball. Yeah. Well, 
if I'd have known that, I would have never dropped another ball and put it in a cup out. How, how many times you played there? Probably four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Best and, score? Uh, best score was the first score, and I shot 80. That's when you had Johnny? Thanks, That's Johnny. That's when I had Johnny. Johnny. Yeah, I Could have been 82. 80. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, birdied 18 oh, nice. Nice. on the first day. And on number 17, I I yank one into the trees on, on the right. And Johnny is over there with me, and he says, Now, Mr. Grace, he goes, I know. I know that guests are not a, not supposed to to tip out here. He goes, but you know, I got seven grandkids, and you know, <laughs> anything you could do, I'd be much obliged. So I I yank my wallet out, and I I got a couple of C notes in there, and I take a C note out, and and I'm trying to hide, you know. Oh God, I'm just got it behind my back. Here, take here, take it, Johnny, for Christ's sake. So he takes it, and I'm just like, man, I you know, I, I just felt good about myself, you know, given. Giving, giving my caddy an you know, illegal $100. So now 18 <laughs> comes, and I've hit in the fairway. The other guest that I'm playing with, who was a teammate of mine, his name was Rick, Rick Wilkins. He had hit it in the right trees on 18, and we're waiting on him, and all of a sudden this ball comes, he whacks it out there, and, and we're, I was waiting on him, and now he comes out of the he comes out of the woods, and we're walking up to our, to our balls, and he's like, he's like, Grace, you're not going to believe this. He goes, I was over in the woods and my caddy came up there and you know, he had a different caddy. Yeah. He goes, my caddy came up to me, said he said he had seven grandkids and all that. <laughs> and, and, and I didn't know what to do. Man, they're running a racket up there. And I fell for it. I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Oh, and uh, like great. I said, I'm sure you've had the, the Augusta mm. National caddies, but... But boy, they they worked me well. That's that is funny. good. Just wait till he hits it in the shit. <laughs> Into the yeah. trees, you got a little cover yeah, going there. Tell him covered. you got seven grandkids. Tell, tell him you, about you the seven paid. grandkids. That's exactly. smart. Johnny knew what he was doing. He got an extra hundo out of it. <laughs> so you were you played Augusta when you were in your twenties. So you were clearly playing yeah. when you were in the bigs. Did you get to play like when you were trying? Like some pitchers bring their clubs and stuff like that. Were you ever playing on the road not or in very, Chicago? Not very much, Stolzi, because well, on the road sometimes if you had an off day because. Because I was an, an everyday guy, and pitchers they get four, you know, especially starters they get four days off. They can take their club, you know, and and in Chicago with the Cubs you play day games, so you 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 don't have time to play golf even in the sun, you know, in the you don't get much good weather in Chicago. But God, Chicago's got some great some golf. of the even best for, even for a limited season. Give us God, a, they got. Give us your favorite couple in Chicago. Oh, uh, Medina Butler. Hey, uh, oh, Butler. Butler just Butler's hard, hard. Butler's just hard. hard. Yeah. For for me, Butler was too hard. Yeah. Um, have you have you ever played Conway Farms? Oh yeah. I really I've never played I Conway. really enjoy that course. Uh, of course, they've got Cog Hill, Dubs Dread, but they've got they've got some courses out there. You know, just. Just I feel like you're North, a, North Shore, and you'd and be a bobbling guy. North Shore, bobbling Shore is, Acres. Yeah, is that the one. Yeah, Shore that place Acres is sweet. Is sweet, you know. Uh, Chicago Golf Club. That's yeah. where that's where Jordan mm -hmm. Jordan was. Uh, but but yeah, and they also had a had a. It's a public course, but they had a PGA out there called Kemper Lakes. Yeah, yeah. which is but everything's out in the suburbs. I lived I lived in the city, but man, but like I said, for a limited season, golf, Chicago golf is truly amazing. Yeah. Truly He's one amazing. of the best spots for yeah. just all around golf. Number of courses, all couldn't agree so more. Good. And there's. There's old school, you know, yeah. and and then but there's also but but man, uh, Medina was was a Beverly. lot of fun. Beverly, you ever played yeah. Beverly? Never played Beverly. Oh, no, you should see that place is unbelievable. It. Oh, really? I mean, it's, it's scary as shit to go down there, but it's a, it's <laughs> oh, incredible. If you accidentally you turn there. right out of the yeah. parking lot, you got some stress, but the golf course is unreal. It's so good. Yeah, and and were you guys did, when you played Butler? Was that white line there uh, that at the at the drop off at like the bag drop, like there's that white line that no women can yeah, come across. I don't know that. if the white line was there, but I, I believe it. That white line, yeah. I was just like, they're for holy real shit, here, they're yeah. not messing around here. Is know? this heaven? No, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, I knew it you existed. Have, <laughs> you Kidding. Have, Everyone you, should play the game. You brought up know. MJ, and mm -hmm. obviously. You were you were the stud for the Cubs in the '90s, and MJ is MJ there right. in Chicago. Did you get to do any things together or spend any time together? Uh, Michael and I are good acquaintances. Um, you know, unfortunately, baseball and basketball were you know one's a winter sport and one's mm -hmm. a summer sport. But that's in, in the in the winter time when you're living in Chicago, guys. Like it's 
it's a little chilly. Yeah, slightly. And so I'm a, I'm a huge sports fan, so I would always go to Bulls games or Blackhawks games. Didn't go to Bears games because that was outdoors and it was too goddamn cold. Yeah. Just too go- – I, I did that twice, never make that mistake again. But, you know, the Jordan's teams were so good. Yeah. I mean, Jordan, Pippen, it, it just – you would go, hey, Gracie, the Knicks are in town. You want to go watch uh, Patrick Ewing and, uh, you, you know, uh, maybe John Starks? And uh, Yeah, let's go check it. It should be a great game. Bulls would be up by 32 at the half, <laughs> you know. And yeah. now you're wa- now in the second half, all you're watching is Will Purdue and, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and, Bill you, Winnington. Yeah, they've taken yeah. – no, no offense, Jordan Will. He's a huge fan play, of show. Yeah, Oh, yeah, but, we love you. But Jordan doesn't even – play in the second half yeah. you know so and half the crowd is left and it's like all right so so that's how good they were but but my my fun jordan story is my my parents came up to to visit me in chicago and we had, we had an off day and uh we, we decided to go out in chicago if you're going to go gamble they have these gambling boats and drove about 30 minutes out to this gambling boat with my mom and my dad Mom wanted to play slot machines, you know, and dad didn't give a shit. And <laughs> and I thought I was a decent blackjack player and well, so so I've I've got this guy, I know he's a casino host out at this out at this uh boat and I we get there. Hey, uh, hey Gracie, you know, you you picked a hell of a night to come out here. Jordan's here. I'm like, "Oh, no kidding." You know, like love to go say hello real quick, you know. And I'd love to love to Introduce my mom, yeah. mom, and my dad to Michael Jordan. You know, this is a. Uh, oh, I'd love to meet Michael Jordan. <laughs> so, so, so now, I don't know if you've ever been on a gambling boat, but there's usually three levels. You know, one level, the lower level used to be the slot machines and the video poker and stuff like that. The second level used to be the blackjack, maybe a couple craps tables. And the third level is more, more like the 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 stranger game. You know, they're. Well, I mean, not the stranger games, but, you know, like roulette. But there's also like the three-card three poker, card you know, just the... Pie you know, gal or whatever, yeah. You, yeah. So, so the second floor is blackjack, and the casino, it's empty. It's roped off. It's empty. The entire, I mean, there's at least 70 blackjack tables on this boat that are not being used. One is, and wow. that's where Jordan's playing. And so... We go up and there's this huge giant of a man. And it's one of Jordan's, you know, security guys. So the casino hosts say, hey, uh, you know, extremely huge man. This is Mark Grace and his and his mother and father. Yeah, hey, hey. You know, he just he just wanted to go say say hello to Michael real quick. So he, he talks like a secret service guy. He talks into his lapel, into a microphone, and Big giant man says, about 30 feet away, there's another big giant man that you need to go talk to. So now we go, same same story, you know, zip, 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 into his lapel. After about four of these, we got to Jordan's table. And he's playing by himself in this enormous second level of the boat, and nobody else is in there. And he's got stacks of, like, I think... 50s and 100s are really really good. He's got he's got colors I've never seen before, guys. <laughs> he's got you know aquamarine. He's got he's got all these these colors and they're stacks of of thousands, 5000s, 10000s and stacks of them. So, I finally get to Michael and say hello real quick. He's in hey Gracie, what's going on, you know? And and says hello to my very gracious to my mom and dad. I can't say enough good things about Jordan. And I, and I just kind of stood there and watched him play. And I watched him play about 20 hands. And if he played 20 hands, he probably won 18 of them. And he's putting thousands upon thousands of dollars, big stacks of chips, anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000 a hand. And he's winning. And I'm watching this shit, and I'm just like, man, it must be good to be the king, you know? <laughs> so he's like, hey, Grace, you want to sit down? No! Yeah. I'm not going to put my $20 bet out there while you're betting $30,000. Yeah. Kiss my entire ass. So, <laughs> so, 
So he's like, well, well, anyway, so I'm like, okay, Michael, I've seen enough, you know, like just good luck, you know, good to see you, thank you, know, and say goodbye, and off we go. And I told the casino host, I said, I'll tell you what, Michael got your ass tonight, man. You know, he goes, he goes, Gracie, he goes, this happens all the time. He always gives it back. Mm -hmm. He always gives it back. He has, he doesn't have the ability to leave a winner. So he'll just stay there and, and until he, he until it. he yeah. gives until he gives those all those stacks back, you know. Eventually, they're gonna get you. Oh, of course, they're gonna get it's you. It's almost like the odds are stacked against you. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> I'm going to believe. Oh, no. well, I feel like it's not a fair fight. But I but I told you those twenty hands, boy. He got their ass. I can't believe he asked you to sit down. Like that'd be like breaking up a dude. perfect game. Like, hey, you. dude, go talk to our pitcher over there. Nobody, <laughs> exactly. Nobody's gotten on base. No, See if you can go you. ask him what he thinks. Dude, no, he is cool you. about it, though. As long as you play right. And you play twenty bucks a hand. He doesn't care. He'll let you sit with him. Yeah, yeah. If you, yeah. If you start you, staying as long on as fourteen, not, as long and you're, you're not, one of them big dudes going to come by, or, yeah. or splitting tens, or yeah. you know, things crap like How cool that. is that though? You like you're on that level. You go in and like, oh, Mike's got the whole floor roped off. The whole off. floor and, to himself. So what was the like? Mike's the guy, obviously, anywhere he goes, any country, anywhere, ever. But you were the dude in Chicago too. Like, could you go out and go to dinner and not get like mobbed and all that? I, I think I, I hate to say I was a man of the people, but I was a man of the people. I didn't travel with security. I didn't go out with an entourage or usually usually it was after getting you know, day games ended about four o'clock. You know, go have a go have a Hawaiian punch or five after the game in the clubhouse. Right, right, right. And then around Wrigley Field, I don't know if you guys have been around yeah. Wrigley Field, but there's just bars and restaurants everywhere around. So there was this place called Murphy's Bleachers, right, mm -hmm. right in yeah. center field. That I, I knew Jim Murphy and and knew all the people. There was actually this private room up there that you know we could we could go in. There was a pool table and a TV, and you know you could eat, drink, and be merry for you know usually maybe an hour or so after the games. But then, you know, me and a couple of teammates. All right, you know, you want to. You want to go to dinner somewhere? Yeah, let's go to uh, let's go to Carlucci's Italian place, or let's go. You know, but I rarely got got bugged. I mean, yeah, there was there, you got recognized, but uh, they were usually pretty respectful. Now, now, Michael, mind you, that's a whole different that's a different level. stratosphere. But it was also pre Instagram. And no one's like, oh, I'm going to take up. You know what and I mean? Thank there was people God there were no cameras. <laughs> Not every dude had a camera. Day. Exactly. Oh, I'd be. That I'd, was the golden I'd be, era. I'd be serving my 20th year in prison as we speak. <laughs> that was the golden era. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I mean, imagine. I mean, that's that's the the bad thing that athletes now have to deal with is the lack of privacy. And you know, I'm not on social media, but uh, it, it it just seems to me like it's 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 tough on athletes and it's tough on just people period because you get to hide behind the keyboard and just lamb base people and everyone's mm -hmm. got a direct line to you and they say shit that they would never say and, to you if they got yeah, an elevator yeah. with you like oh my god i love yeah. you and then on the internet they're it, like grace sucks yeah or they can ruin your life it messes you know, people's it, yeah, brains yeah. up bad yeah. and i'm just i just i've always been a no i'm not gonna do it and i'm gonna stick to that now you never say never but you know i'm 57 years old now and yeah I can see uh, I'm just, posting a picture not, with some emojis, a couple of smiley face emojis on yeah. there, here, an emoji guy. With, with you and some lips? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that seems and, right and, up your that, alley. That'd go over like a fart in church. So, <laughs> Should we get into some baseball? Yeah, I want to hear I mean, all the about baseball it. is going to be incredible. I mean, obviously, you're drafted out of San Diego State. Right. You spent three years in the minors, correct? Uh, about two years and three weeks. Okay. Yeah. Well, full I think I'm curious. Ball, full year, double A, in about three weeks of triple A. We call the mini tours in golf the Jicky Jacks around here, so that's very comparable Could, to Kajicky Jacks. No, Jicky Jacks. Jacks. The Jicky Jacks. The Jicky Jacks. Okay. Yes. We, that's very, I would say, comparable to the minor league. Shout out imagine. Jamie Stowitz for coining that phrase. Yes, but I want to hear some Jick. I want to hear some um, baseball minor league stories. Minor league stories. Because that had to be a lot. I mean, I know it's not where you wanted to be, but it had to be a lot of fun. No, you, you, some of the some of the greatest times I ever had yeah. were in the minor leagues because. You know, you're you're riding buses for you know hours and hours, and you you get there and you go straight to the ballpark and and go play and and but and now mind you, you know, the bus rides in 1985, my my first year in Peoria, Illinois, you know 
there was no internet. You know, you couldn't stream movies and you couldn't, mm. you know, you, you, I had a Walkman and Walkman. I had a Walkman, <laughs> some, some headphones and some cassette tapes from ACDC back in black to, uh, to, you know, Hank Williams Jr. You know, you, you, whatever you, and everybody was asleep. I, I'm one of those guys. I don't know about you guys. I can't sleep on planes. I can't sleep on buses. I, I'm I'm terrible at it. So Sleaze can sleep right here during this interview. I can sleep. <laughs> he can sleep looks like a heroin he, he looks binge. Like <laughs> kind of looks like he's nodding off. Yeah. But, I can do it anywhere. But yeah, I, I don't have that ability. So I was that guy that just in Illinois and Iowa and Wisconsin, where wherever we went to, I'm just staring out at cornfields for miles and miles and. And, you know, it, it wasn't easy, but we didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the, I still have friends that I, that I keep in touch with here, you know, 40 years later or whatever it was, 35 years later that I played minor league ball with that they never made it to the big leagues. And, you know, that's a, it's a, it's a special bond that, uh, you know, your locker is about uh, two feet high and about six inches wide and you got to put all your stuff in there you know and 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 everybody is cramped in together and everybody stinks and the shit you know and the the showers half of them don't work and you know it, it's but at the time you didn't know anybody yeah. and and so i so i played a full year in a ball in peoria illinois and then i went i i led the league in hitting at 342 and Drove in 95, and in the minor leagues, you play a, one less month. You, September 1st, your last day, whereas in baseball, October 1st. So there's you play 140 games in the minor leagues. So led the league in hitting. And by the way, my rookie, my my first year in A-ball, I made $700 a month. Oof. I was just going to ask a you, month. if you didn't mind, what's a, what's a minor league contract? $700 a month, and Uncle Sam gets his fair share of that. So – Needless to say, you know, I, you got a few honey I had to, to play I, with. I had to make that horrible phone call to mom and dad. Give us some money, please. You know, and you know, and but out of out of seven hundred dollars a month, we had to live like five guys in a two bedroom apartment. Oh, God. And so, so I have a really good year in A ball, and so I get promoted to Double A, where <laughs> after that big year I had in A ball. I got to raise up to a thousand dollars a month. Oh Hello, God. world. In Pittsfield, Massachusetts. That's right, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Never been there. Good, good for you. I'll be honest. Does a foul go a long way in Pittsfield? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's aptly named, and it's uh, <laughs> and we it's it's uh, it, it was it was tough, but once again. It was one of those where some of the some of the really good friends I made, we just made the you make the best of it because you don't know any better. So we're traveling all over Vermont and Massachusetts into Pennsylvania. You know, you're also seeing now, mind you, this is not cornfields and flatness like you have in in the Midwest in Illinois, like we're we're at Abel. It's as it as it got later in the season, uh, August September, and, you know, the leaves start to change. Really beautiful, and there's some mountains, and you know, there was some good fishing and stuff like that, but. And we were good. We were really, really good. So that always helps you get motivated. Is is when the team's good, and you know this guy's this guy's uh, you're pushing you, and you're pushing this guy, and it, it kind of made it it kind of made it good. There was one bar in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. I know you're going to be shocked. That I'm talking about a bar, but <laughs> I bet they knew there you was there. One bar, and it was called <laughs> Al's. And we would go in there after our games, and the local yokels didn't really appreciate us too much in there. You know, these, this guy's from Florida, this guy's from California, this guy, you know, these fucking guys coming in here, and, <laughs> you know, and they're getting the attention from, from, from the Pittsfield girls, which, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they didn't have anything to be jealous about. Guys. So, so, you know, there was a couple times that, uh, you know, we, had to had to protect ourselves yeah. and, and and that kind of stuff. But looking back on it, it's like there was a couple of times. You know, let's step outside. Let's and and I and we'd go out and watch one of my teammates and watch one of the local local yokels. You know, all right, stay out of it. We got to just beat the shit out of each other. I mean, like not one sided. I mean, both both this guy and this guy are landing blows, and it's just like, 
wow, <laughs> this is so cool. And, and, Don't know, worry if someone dies. I, I, I was too big of a wuss to get in one of those kind of kind of fights out in the parking lot, but God, it, it happened. That's our shortstop. He yeah. shows up the next day, exactly. bloodied up. Yeah. And, you know, and and the coach was so proud of him. You know, and 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 you guys jump in. No, we didn't jump in. All right, start running. Start running. We had to, yeah, we had to run miles because we didn't jump in. So it only took you just a little over two years to get to the league. Give me the first day you walk in. You finally arrive. You're in the bigs. First day walking into the Cubs locker room. I I had to fly from Des Moines, Iowa. That's where we have our, our AAA with the Cubs, Des Moines, Iowa. So I get a call at 6 o'clock in the morning. Eh, more like 4 o'clock in the morning. And it's my AAA manager. Never forget him. Pete McCannon was his name. And he was kind of a, a – had a had a wise guy sense of humor, funny guy. So four o'clock in the morning, my you know, you had a landline, this is before cell phones. And you know, my phone rings, I answer, oh, hello. And he's like, he's like, Gracie, it's uh, it, it's Pete McCann. And he goes, I just want to tell you that uh, congratulations. You're going to the big leagues tomorrow. Fuck off, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and I and, I, and I, I hung up the phone as you do to your, because I to thought he was just manager. messing with me. Yeah. He probably got drunk out and you know somewhere in Des Moines and decided to mess with me. So <laughs> that is a weird time to get the call. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't at four a.m. I yeah. wouldn't expect the big news. So, so ten seconds later, the phone rings again. He goes, "Gracie, I swear to God, I'm not messing with you. <laughs> you know, not only are you going to the big leagues, but your flight is in two hours. You know, you and I'm like, all of a sudden it hit me. I'm like, holy Christ Almighty! You know, like. I, I I I knew I was going to get that phone call sometime, but not at four in the morning, yeah. you know. And so and and now my flight is leaving in two hours, so I had time to call my mom and dad. And my dad was pissed off at me because I called him at four in the morning. <laughs> and I said, "Well, I just wanted to tell you, I'm going." And so they were, you know, mom cried and dad didn't care. And and <laughs> I'm kidding. He was my hero. God love him. And. So I have to fly from Des Moines, Iowa. Now use your geography here, guys. I had to fly from Des Moines, Iowa to Chicago. Okay. Mm -hmm. I laid over in Chicago because the team was in San Diego. So I had to fly an hour and some change to Chicago east and then fly all the way to San Diego another four hours that way. So, you know, 7 o'clock game. I didn't get out to San Diego until late afternoon. Now I go to the ballpark and – I get there, first thing I'm told is manager's office right there. He wants to see it. Don Zimmer was my manager, oh, famous, yeah, yeah, famous yeah. Boston Red Sox. And yeah. Pedro threw him on the ground. There yeah, you go. He got yeah. Fucked yeah. Up so back Don day, Zimmer was guy. my manager. Yeah, he threw, threw his ass Old right on the ground. got knocked out. So I go in there. I said, I said, hey, Zim. He goes, shut the door. So I shut the door. And he said, first of all, congratulations, kid. He goes, you're my first baseman. I'm in the lineup that night. Oh, wow. And he said, you're my first baseman. I said, oh, man, appreciate it. He goes, until you show me you're not my first baseman. And I said, okay, that's fair. He goes, we'll know in a week. A week. That's enough time. That's all I get is a week? I, I've had some horse shit weeks in my career. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, man. You know, so I kind of told myself, if this is what it's like to get your chance, then I better get hot. And... That night, went out, made an out my very first at bat in the big leagues, hit a cue shot to the third baseman, easy out. Uh, second at bat, got my first base hit as a major leaguer uh, off a guy named Jimmy Jones. Uh, he, he, he is, he's my, he's my, the guy I got my, so I ended yep. up going two, guy, two for yeah. five, yeah, two for five that night. And we ended up winning. The very next night, I hit my very, fir I hit my first home run in the big leagues. Off a guy named left-hander named Keith Comstock. Old Keith, Keith Comstock. Yes. Uh, two days later, he was released by the Padres <laughs> and and never really heard from again. And uh, basically, they said, "Well, if this if this clown can hit a home run off you, you must not be that good." And he got released. That's nice though. You're coming in yeah. first week. It's like yeah. Q school so, for you, and they throw guys that are you know, but the but, lame ducks. But I told myself, you know, I got to get hot, and I did. And you know, you guys have That's been impressive. through that. Like, uh, you know, hey, if you if you don't do something here, you're you're not going to get your card. You're going to go to the corn fair or something like that, and yeah. you got to get hot. And 
and you guys have done it your whole some lives. Do, some you don't. know how yeah. it is, exactly. That's really cool. Um, we found out some, talking to – I realized that baseball players, I feel like, are the most superstitious of all the athletes. I couldn't agree more. Okay. Give me Mark Grace's superstitions. I was uh, – I wasn't one of those guys like Wade Boggs that, you know, had to eat the same thing every day and all that. Uh, you know, I'd ruin my body with burgers and fried chicken. It didn't freaking matter. Um, <laughs> my my one superstition was I lived about a mile south of Wrigley Field. And, I you know, in the side street, there was no freeways near where I lived. Uh, so if we won... I would take the same route to the ballpark the next day. If we lost, you know, there was a thousand different ways to you know, all these little side streets. So I would I would take a different route. So that was probably my biggest was Well that's normal. Yeah, that's that, normal, that, yeah. That, normal that sports guy thing. shit. So, yeah. But but I always used to tell people, think think about this. I'm I used to tell people, I'm not superstitious. It's bad luck. <laughs> there you go. Thanks there for you laughing. Go. You guys got, got it. it. You I got, got you. Got it. We picked exactly. up. We're dumb, but exactly. That's right yeah. around our level. So, so yeah, uh, that was. There's some guys that do some crazy shit, though. Oh yeah. Um, you know, like I said, Wade. Th- there's a lot of guys. Yeah. What was this Wade Bob? What did he do? He he ate chicken every single day. Respect. Every single day, he ate chicken, and he had to go out and run his sprints at the same time. Mm-hmm every single day and uh you know i think superstitions you know i think they can be if they if 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 it helps you deal with things but i think they can they can also control you to the point of voodoo you know where where it's like that this is not healthy dude you know like uh, this has no effect on you either the dudes that step out of the box and have to tap 72 different things and do all that i'm like that come on you took a ride on oak street right here didn't mean (laughs) that's not why you freak you fucked up the game you know (laughs) it's it's like so so that that's kind of like you know oh you know i would take a different route but i i think i was also you know open-minded enough to realize that you know, that's not yeah. why. You no, know, the the reason why is that pitcher was better than me today. That's why. That's why I was no good. Or you didn't wear the right socks. Or one of the two. Exactly. That that Dan one Mar- of the two. Yeah. Dan Could Marley been. wearing the inside out socks. What's yeah, that? Yeah, Marley yeah. wears the inside yeah, out socks. So I mean, Marley, yeah, right. goes, yeah. one goes at the exact same time for everything. To the I mean, Starts everybody's left got leg. something. Yeah. I used to hate playing uh, titles threes. It's why? pretty much shit with why? everything. I was gonna I say maybe like you should have round. started I playing. Made, I probably fucked up some important hole in my career With where I three. could have done something good and instead I messed up and now here I am. What, and what I was are, like on that. It was probably your, the three. I always gave my threes away. I will say, golf is another. Yeah. I, I know a lot of golfers that are very superstitious. Oh, yeah. what, what are some of your guys? I always had to if it was important, like final round, I always had to play fourth. That was like a, I love Titleist Fourth. Titleist I tried fourth. to trade my okay. other ones. Never away, any other ball but Titleist. I would prefer to play the entire just give me a dozen Titleist fours. Okay. That was like kind of, and I had a lucky pair of green underpants for final round. Obviously, they weren't lucky enough. <laughs> those say. bastard, those bastard underpants. Green. Ruin. No, but I was yeah. kind of like you. Like if if I played well, I would try to do the exact same thing the next day. Okay. So if I had something at dinner the night before and played went out and played good, I was eating that for dinner again. The really? Next okay. Night. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. but nothing crazy. So like, what what about like for instance, Tiger always the the red and the black on Sunday. Did you guys have a Sunday outfit? Well, you have or, to make it to Sunday. Yeah, I, Sunday. I, had, a I had a nice Friday outfit, well, you though. Made, you made plenty of Sunday. So um, I, I was just going to say, you know, there's like, man, it's like, okay, I got to get out to the range at the same time, yeah. hit, do the exact same routine. Mm-hmm. Did, did you guys always do the exact same routine? I had the same warm up clubs every yeah, time. Pretty similar. But that wasn't like a super, that was just like how I warmed up. I didn't okay. like, if I sucked one day, I was still doing it the same the next day, whereas like I got golf you. balls and stuff like that would change. Golfers have some weird stuff. I mean, guys only market tails up or heads up or a certain year okay. or whatever. Like, See, there's I've a lot of, of I only that. carry three tees in my pocket. At it. There's a lot of like kind of just weird okay. little stuff like that. But I feel like baseball dudes are the, you guys have so much time to sit around and think, and you play so many damn games. It's like, you get, oh yeah, you know. I mean, they're you know, don't step on the line, step on the line, yeah. and you know, th- just that kind of stuff. The undoing the gloves both oh, times. See, I didn't wear batting them. gloves, so I didn't have to worry about. Yeah, but the all that the, stuff, the routine in the on deck circle, the routine once you get once you get up there, you know, it, I I didn't I didn't really do much of that. I didn't have a routine because I couldn't I didn't have time to remember all that shit. 
Watch to be it. honest with you. Next time you watch golf, if Kyle Stanley's in the coverage, he undoes his glove with his mouth yeah, every time. Really? Mm-hmm. On the green, every, on the tee Every box. time, if it's off, yeah. And I think when he goes to take it off, he takes it off with his mouth instead of his finger. It's weird. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah. yeah. That, that is his mouth every time. I know some guys that only use broken tees on par threes as opposed to full tees and stuff. Just weird stuff. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, I have noticed, <laughs> I've noticed in golf, more guys are hitting it off the deck on par threes. Yeah, I don't understand why, that either. Why is that? Because I, I don't know about you guys. I always want a little advantage of the tee. I think because they they practice on the range, obviously off the ground. That all the fairways they hit, all the irons they hit throughout the day are off the ground. So when they get to a part three, okay. they're like, I just want. But I'm with you. I want that perfect lie, and also know I can get away with a little more. Okay, yeah. gotcha. the guy that chunks it. I need that. Jack Nicklaus said always use a tee, so that's good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why I interlock. I interlock. Nicklaus did it. Tiger does it. Why can't I? I want to ask you good about. You're, you mentioned going against um, great pitchers and everything. Nolan Ryan, oh. one of the best that ever did it. Tell me about your first time. You, I know, against... I know who you've talked to. <laughs> you starting to figure out who uh, I've talked to now? So, there's some at, moles. That prick told you the story, didn't he? So, Actually, I don't know any of the stories. I just know the topics. I wish I wish we had a visual on this because um, first time I faced Nolan Ryan was down in the Houston Astrodome. Uh, you know, now, mind you, I grew up in Southern California. And he played for the California Angels at the time. We, you know, 10 minutes from my house was a stadium. So I used to always go to the Angels game and I watched Nolan Ryan. Me and my buddies would sit there and you're like, whoa, this dude's unbelievable. He's throwing 100 miles. You think you could foul one off him? Yeah, I could foul one. Fuck off. You could not, you know. And so all these things that we did as kids watching Nolan Ryan. Now, here it is a few years later and I'm facing this guy, you know, and all these old fantasies are coming to life. And so, first time I face him, he strikes me out in four pitches. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, and I've been in the big leagues like maybe two weeks. He strikes me out on four pitches, and I go back to the dugout, and my shortstop was a guy named Sean Dunstan, one of my favorite people in the world. I said, is there many guys like him up here? And he goes, nah, Gracie, he's one of the best, man. I said, because if there are, I need to go back to Des Moines right now. <laughs> and so now, fast forward about two weeks later, Houston comes to Chicago. And guys on second, and I run into a run into a Nolan Ryan fastball and hit in the left center gap for an RBI double. And I'm standing on second base. And I look over at the third base coach, see if he's putting on a sign or anything. Now I gotta I gotta look at the mound. And there's Nolan Ryan standing halfway between the mound and second base, standing there staring at me. And I've I've got my hands on my knees and I'm just Look, and I'm like, oh, look at this son of a bitch. He's trying to intimidate me. <laughs> so I'm not going to let him intim- intimidate me, so I'm going to stare back. That stare back lasted about three seconds, and then I just dropped my head, and I just, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and he intimidated the shit out of me, you guys. And my very next at bat, I got up there, and my number was 17. He planted a fastball right oh, between no. my nu- my one and my seven, and, oh, God, he hit me hard. It hurt. <laughs> it hurt. It, it not it's only 100 hurt, miles an hour, of course it hurt. It hurt bad. And I'm just like, I got to first base, and they had a first base. His name was Glenn Wilson. And I got to first base, and he's like, you all right, kid? I'm like, man, am I not even allowed to get a fucking hit? <laughs> you know, I get a hit, and he, he he hits me. So so he scared the crap out of me. And fortunately, that was before interleague play. So he went to the Texas Rangers after my rookie year, so I never had to face him again. Or you know, I'm sure he, I'd have more Nolan Ryan, Nolan Ryan stories to. Tell I can't you believe about he him. drilled you after one hit. Thank you. I can't. Yeah, Two weeks in, they, they just throw it. Dude, was, so was, like. But do you think if you wouldn't have stared him down for that whole three seconds, he would have stared seconds, you? Yeah. Well, I was trying to. He was trying to be a you. man for three seconds, Colt. <laughs> it's hard to do. It, it didn't work. I've been not trying that not, for a long time. Not only did it not intimidate him, he drilled me in the back. It, three uh, seconds was is an a, eternity. It was a complete failure on my part. Not as bad as Robin Ventura's failure when he decided, well, yeah, decided to I, run I, at him. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to charge this guy. You don't mess with Nolan. No. How many no. brawls were you in, though? Uh, I've lot, seen a few. Lots of, lots of uh, quite a few bench clears, but I only charged one mound. And who was that? His name was Frank DePino. And Fast. we were we were teammates in 1988, my rookie year. And he was a pitcher, obviously. I charged him, and but. <laughs> 
he and I got along about like a cat and a dog that year, uh, my rookie year. You know, he was one of those guys, veteran guys. He was getting towards the end of his rope, and I was just, you know, my rookie year. And he he was tough on rookies, and, you know, and he was kind of a, you know, he, he was a quippy guy. He kind of had a quick wit about him. He, he, he said some funny things. Well, you know, you'd be out stretching, and he was, you know, I was his target um, almost on a daily basis. You know, he would, he'd have some, or I'd walk in in the morning for a day game at about 9.20 in the morning, you know, and my you, I had to go to the end of the locker room. So as you're going by, you know, you know, morning Stoltz, and, you know, Morning, Colt. You know, you go by, you know, and then I go by Frank DePino. You know, morning, Frank. And, oh, my God. Mark Grace just said hello to me. Oh, my God. I'm going to call my dad. You know, he's just being a dick. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, man. So so anyway, uh, and, and a couple times we had to be pulled apart from each other. So anyway, at the end of the season, he signs as a free agent with the St. Louis Cardinals, who is a big rival with the yeah. Chicago Cubs. And he tells, he tells a couple guys on my team that I'm so glad I'm st- I, I, I stayed in the National League because the first time, first chance I get, I'm I'm drilling Grace. So news gets back to me. I said, I said, well, I'm, all right, all right. If if he does, you know, ring the bell. It's round one. And sure enough, we're killing the St. Louis Cardinals. Ryan Sandberg, I'm hitting behind Ryan Sandberg, and he hits a couple of home runs in front of me. Second home run he hits in front of me, puts us up like 12-1 to 1 in the sixth inning. We're just killing the Cardinals. Whitey Herzog, who was the manager of the Cardinals, comes out and taps his left taps his left arm to bring in the left-hander, who is Frank DePino. So, I know. He, he, he's <laughs> he's, he's going yeah. to take this yeah. opportunity. So, so, I tell Rick Sutcliffe, I said, all right. I'm like, if this some bitch hits me, I'm going. I'm going to need the cavalry because when you charge a mound, the first people that are going to get there are the infielders yep. for the for the defensive team, and they're and they're going to they're going to be there for a couple seconds before the the cavalry comes. So, so as I got in, as I got up in the box, I look over, and every single St. Louis Cardinal on the first base dugout is standing outside the dugout. <laughs> Just ready. Oh, wow. and, ready. I, and I look I look over at the third base dog. Every Chicago Cub is standing like, oh yeah, I'm getting hit here yeah. and I'm gonna have to go. <laughs> well, the first pitch he throws me is way inside. He actually misses me. He misses me by by about one inch. You know, I I moved out of the way of it and he misses me. Fuck it. That's close enough. Let's go. And and here we go. Oh, you took oh, it. He didn't, even, get hit hit you. He didn't oh. even hit me, but but <laughs> That's smart, because then otherwise but, you just got to wait and get hit on the but, next one. No, I'm, I'm not going to just stand there and let yeah. him take target practice. And I, the whole mean, team's I know he's already. trying to hit me. He just yeah. missed me. So here we go. And <laughs> and I went out there, and it was a good one. Yeah. I mean, it was a good one. There, there, you can you can find it on the internet. It, it was a good one. And uh, anyway, you, you get to the bottom of the pile, and, and you know, it's just mayhem above you. And and so anyway, you're you're being held to the ground and your face is in the ground and and, and well, sure enough, the, we're we're about six inches from each other, but we're being held and we're just screaming at me, you know, <laughs> f you, no f you, you know. And, and well, sure enough, as we're unpiling, they let go of him first, so he gets uh. he just hauls off and he I see this fist come up and I just close my eyes like oh shit I'm gonna get. <laughs> I mean, he smacks me one good right above my eye. Didn't didn't fillet me, but he left a nice little little mm-hmm. mark on there. You know, left what do they call those uh, scars? Not bruises, or but uh, <laughs> anyway, he uh, contusion, I, something like that. Yeah, some so, sort of an alley. We'll, we'll come up with it, but yeah, he he popped me pretty good, and I lose it. And now Pedro Guerrero wants to fight, and I'm just like, yeah, you know, it, it, it was one of those. So so now. I go back, I get kicked out of the game. You know, I'm walking off the field in St. Louis. People are throwing shit at me. Hot, you know, I'm getting popcorn <laughs> thrown at me and hot dog wrappers. If it was if it was New York or Philadelphia, it would have been flashlight batteries and but so so now I go to take off my uniform. I've been thrown out of the game and I can't get I can't 
left my I, I've separated my left shoulder in in the fight. I've somehow some way I've separated my left shoulder. So our old school trainer says we got to get that thing back and mm-hmm. so so he fills up this cast iron bucket full of water and it weighs about 10 12 pounds it felt like it felt like it weighed 400 pounds at the time and he's like lift that bucket like i said this is old school i'm older than you guys and i lift it and tears are just streaming down i'm like oh my god he goes just hold on to it hold on to it and i guess somehow lifting a bucket will somehow relax your shoulder enough to pop well the the Shoulder goes back in the socket about after six or seven seconds of holding this bucket full of water. And pow, it goes back in. And that was probably the most excruciating thing I've ever felt in my life for about three seconds. I mean, I Oof. felt I felt like like I'd rather I'd rather get in a fight with a great white shark. And but then after about three seconds, like, oh, that's so much better. That's now I still missed a couple of weeks because I because I hurt my shoulder, but that's one another reason that uh, that was the last time I charged a mount, and that was my second year in the bigger. It's just not worth. I don't it. think they fix it's shoulders like it. that anymore either. No, no, there's actual, never heard that. There's actual it's technology like some, like, now. Actual the doctors and, and it's shit. Not, it's yeah. not a bucket full of water. <laughs> that's incredible. Oh damn. <laughs> Well, we got we we'd have to ask I, about. I mean, this this might go. I don't two know. Hours. I got seventeen more. Yeah, we got so many more questions I want to talk about. But being in Chicago, obviously the legend Harry Carey. Yes, we got to know about Harry Carey. First off, can you give us an person impression at all? I, you know, I think it's it's because Harry is such an icon. You know, I I can do the best I can, but you know, I was very I was very lucky, guys. Harry, like I said, he's an icon. Yeah, there will never be another Harry Carey. Yeah. There, you know, there, it's just not allowed. You know, he was he was not politically correct. He 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 wanted uh, he wanted you know big breasted girls on on camera. You know, and like you know, hey, you know, don't show her face, pan down. You know, and stuff like <laughs> you that. You don't think you'd get away you with know, that now? Yeah, I, I don't think that works I, anymore. I, I don't think you can get away with that anymore. But you know, that was that that was it. And but but everybody loved Harry, so I was lucky. He liked me. So if Harry if if Harry liked you, he could make you a star, and he helped make me a star in Chicago. If he didn't like you, your ass was out of town within a few days. Wow. He would run. He'd get you run right out of That's town. That's incredible that, that an announcer has a broadcast. Yeah, that'll never happen again because either. the fans they were they were on everything yeah. he says. If if he thinks you're good, mm-hmm. the fans think you're good. If he didn't, if he thought you were no good, ass out. So so my my best. Now, do you, do you guys ever remember Harry? Are you guys old I mean, enough to remember Harry? Clear, like we know yeah. who he is, but so, we're not like, yeah, he was. So anyway, the the thing about about you know Harry, Harry loved, you know, talking about women, you know, and and you know, oh look at the, you know, if there was a if there was a pretty girl that they put on camera, you know, oh, it's a beautiful day at the ballpark, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So anyway, so Cubs baseball, it would be, you know show the pitch and between pitches they'd show the crowd and that was the way cubs baseball was well anyway after a pitch they show they show this couple in the stands and they're passionately kissing they're 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 making out in the stands and harry's oh oh, 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 they're having fun at the old ballpark you know (laughs) and so you know pitch back to this couple pitch back to this couple and they're still making out now this goes on for a couple of innings couple now it's become kind of part of the broadcast it, it's it's become you know they're you know showing the game and then there's this couple you know and they're and they're still making out like get a room dudes so <laughs> so finally harry says to steve steve stone he says hey steve i think i've got this couple figured out he says that i think that He's kissing her on the strikes, and she's kissing him on the balls. <laughs> <laughs> he had no idea of the Freudian slip that he had made. He just—that's that's how much greatness. they're kissing. That you know—that's just how much they're kissing. You know, <laughs> strikes. Him. But he said it that way, and there was just dead silence that is for about 30 <laughs> seconds and then you hear Harry, <laughs> Harry's getting an earful yeah. Foreman's producer you know and all you hear Harry's go what <laughs> he had no idea <laughs> what he had said so good and 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 that is a that you know that is a 
an ungodly true story that, that is uh, fantastic that, that you can't make up and 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 nowadays you get fired we, immediately. We, oh, you'd be, you'd be done like before that. the next inning. Oh, yeah. You'd be absolutely. out and canceled and yeah. all the stuff. <laughs> He's kissing, kissing her, on, her on the strikes and she's he was, kissing him on the balls. That's incredible. Yeah, he that's was in good. the right era. The right mm-hmm. era. Oh, they, I mean, we were too young to like really see him, yeah. or at least I wasn't following baseball like that at the time. But like right. the Will Ferrell, you know, that's how all like our gen- yeah. you know, that whole. Yeah, he, uh, you know, Will Ferrell, all, all due respect to him, his hair is not that great. It's like really it, exaggerate. You it, know, it's, it's not that There's great. actually a pitcher in the major leagues that does a very good. Ryan very, Dempster. Well, he, I was going to say there's a guy named Derek Holland, played does for the Rangers for a that? long time. Yeah, they would have him when the Rangers were in the World Series. Um, against the Cardinals one year, they had him like in between innings. He wasn't pitching that day, and they had him do Harry Carey. And he's pretty you know, good, he's at, good it? at it. Yeah, I've never heard that. I'm gonna yeah. have to hear. He that, did a but... great take me out to the ball game. Take yeah. seventh inning stretch. That was deal. It. it was fantastic. Yeah. How I... did did players like you said? Because he, he controls the whole narrative. Like you said, if Harry likes you, the fans like you. Were yeah. players trying to kiss ass to him to be like, hey, get him on my side, and make everyone like me? I yeah, would. I would. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know. You can say there, you know, the, he, he, I don't know of too many icons. This guy's an icon. Yeah. Muhammad Ali was an icon. John Madden, Harry yeah, Carey, those I are mean, like the two. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I mean, if, and if Harry invited you to dinner, you fucking went. Yeah. You didn't say, no, I'm, I need to stay home with the, with the wifey poo tonight. No, you went. And you, you came home. Blasted out of your mind. Your <laughs> wife was pissed off at you, you know. And I need to do it it's but for business. But Harry you Carey. went. That's yeah. exactly right. And was his real name actually Harry Carey? Uh, n- nobody knows because Harry was an orphan. Oh, oh he was really? he, Harry was an orphan, so nobody really knows. When did the? Because I feel like that's just too coincidental. I, I don't think his name was yeah. Harry Carey. Yeah, that's just too. Yeah. When did the glasses? Is that always a thing? Oh, that was always a thing. He always he always wore the yeah the, the huge the thick, whatever they the are lens, like telescopes. Well, what, I mean, that yeah. was part of the whole deal though. Made him, he had to get made mobbed. him different. Yeah, yeah, he had to get mobbed oh, going he, out. He couldn't so, go. So, yeah. So one time, two Hall of Famers, Ryan Sandberg and Andre Dawson, two Hall of Famers and me, we're we're down in Houston and. Before batting practice, we're we're going to do a photo shoot. The three of us, you know, the the number two, three, and four hitters for the Cubs, we're doing a photo shoot. Two Hall of Famers and me. So, above the above the visitors dugout in Houston was the fans. You know, hey, uh, you know, Rhino, Andre, Mark, please sign, sign. Okay, we'll be right there, guys. You know, we got to finish this photo shoot. You know, and cheese. You know, all that stuff. Well, right as we're finishing up. And we just we go up to just above the dugout and we're signing autographs and like I said, two Hall of Famers and me. Thirty seconds after we get started, Harry Carey peeks his head out and he's about forty feet from from the three of us. Somebody says, "Hey, there's Harry Carey." Every one of those fans, <laughs> beep, beep, they I went mean. they they went over to Harry Carey and there was nobody left. To sign for two Hall of Famers, Andre Dawson, Ryan Sandberg, and then myself. We looked at each other like we know where we are on the totem yeah, pole here, that's boys. That's incredible. You know, and that was that was a lesson learned like that. Just yeah. how popular that guy was. That'll never. I mean, I can't think of another broadcaster in any sport where guys would like fade their own team and be like, "Oh, there's the yeah, there's our talk, broadcaster. Forget these John dudes. Madden, forget these Hall of you know, Famers. Vince yeah. Scully, maybe yeah. you know somebody like that. But they're, I mean, you can count them on one hand. That's incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then I got uh, I got my. Do, do we have my do, your poster? Your poster? Have, your oh, prop? I don't well, know where the poster. Was. Oh, it's over there. We, we can find we, it. Because it's I right feel, there. Sleeves will get it. I feel it. like I feel like, like I'm talking. Right I feel like I'm talking too much, and we're running out of time. Well, there's no well, such there's thing no as such time. Thing. Okay. We just normally go at an hour. It just popped up out of thin so, air right yeah. there. Yeah, so, take us through this. I don't want to open it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll open it for you, and I'll show you the. Next. We have to get to the United eventually. <laughs> okay. so, I don't want to so, though. So here, here we are. Wow. Oh, we got to describe this for the audio okay. listeners. So this is like a, a life size poster life-size, of, life-size of Mark Grace chart of Mark Grace with a milk mustache holding, holding a glass of milk with a milk mustache, and I'm much younger as you can see. Six two, yeah, huh? Six foot two. Yeah, I, I give myself I give myself six two. So anyway, so. In 1995, it's Mark Grace here, come post, down, come, poster come down day. here. Yeah. Come down about In the 1995, mic. Yeah. it's Mark Grace poster day at Wrigley Field. And the first 25,000 fans that, that, that come in, I'm tired of looking at that thing. So, so first 25,000 fans come into the 
come into Wrigley Field, get that poster, me holding a glass of milk with a milk mustache looking like an idiot. So they're passed out scroll style, and they're passed with the backside rolled up. So you can see it's white. So there are these really big white scrolls. Oh, and every, you know, what, yeah, they're 25,000 of them. So every time I came to the plate, you know, they wave, you know, it was like a glow stick at a rave, you know, woo, grace, you. Yeah. So fast forward to the ninth inning, we're down a run facing the San Francisco Giants. And, you know, all of a sudden we get a rally going base runner, base runner, out, base runner. Bases are loaded. And, who comes to the bat but Mr. Poster Boy himself, Mark Grace. And everybody gets up and they're waving their posters and it just looks like a whiteout at Wrigley Field. Woo, we're going to win for sure. Grace will never let us down, you know. <laughs> Base hit wins it. Sacrifice fly ties it. And I'm facing this closer for the Giants. His name is Rob Nin, and he was very good. And, you know, the place is going absolutely bananas. And... I hit into a 6-4-3 double play to end the game. <laughs> 25,000 posters came flying on the field. <laughs> I mean, they threw they threw these posters on the field. It, it looked like it snowed on Wrigley Field because they were all white. Now, I'm running back into the dugout. The game's over. I'm getting hit by posters. And so the bottom line is, guys, if you ever think you're having a bad day, you ain't having that bad a fucking day. I wow. can promise you that. So and and if at least they, it wasn't if, bobblehead day and, and cold if they <laughs> if they didn't if they didn't throw them on the field there was two guys right behind our dugout as I'm going into the, they opened up their post and ripped They're them in half high. and then there was there was also a group of people over here lighting them on fire like lighting the posters <laughs> on fire these, that's real fans these are the, these are the home fans, guys. Lighting my shit on fire. We have 162 games, guys. Just yeah. relax. Good news so, is so, that one's worth a shitload. That's probably the only one left. So needless to say, you have, you haven't had that bad a day. Oh I my mean, god. A bogey here, a bogey there. Ain't so freaking That's bad. Great. We've never had life size milk you. posters either. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> probably never will. I think what we've decided from this is we're gonna have to have episode two with Mark Gray because we haven't even got. This is like the, the preface yeah, to the because we got to do the E nine. Or, I, or I'm gonna audible. I got them written. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna move them around That's and ask some shit I didn't get to so, ask. Yeah, I, I get a little long winded. So no, it's, no, it's great. That means we can we do want. episode two because we haven't even got to the World Series. Oh, okay. Which in episode you did win two. That. that was cool. Yeah, good by the way, congrats. We'll get to that later. Oh, yeah. Congrats. That was cool. cool job on winning the biggest shit in baseball. All right. All so right. now ask him something dumb. All right. Emergency <laughs> nine. This is where we get really fun. Can we have that? I love it. Just throw it on the ground for now. We'll figure it out later. All right. I gotta figure. Okay. You go. We ask this to everyone. You can hey. trade lives with anyone, dead or alive, Ooh. for a day. Who's it going to be? Man. Tiger Woods, Nicholas. Uh, you only get to pick one. You get to pick <laughs> the day, though. You could be like one. Tiger 97. Okay. I would say, I would say for, for one day? Yeah, just a day. How about, I'm sorry. Uh, man, how about... Uh, was it Johnny Miller's 64 at 63 Oakmont? 63, 63 at Oakmont. Okay. Have you heard about it? 63 at Oakmont, yeah. Did you ever watch Oakmont for a decade? 63. Yeah, I mean, either. Yeah. Shit, and, what was that? And, you know, Johnny, Johnny was, you know, he was a good commentator, but he tended to mention that about every <laughs> single day, didn't he? I don't even know what you're talking about. I didn't yeah, even know he shot 63 did you, at Oakmont. Did you guys watch, uh, <laughs> watch the Players' Championship? Yeah, this year? Okay, yeah, this yeah. year. You know, the, the amazing Cameron Smith putting, you know, display, but... I, I decided Paul Azinger is a really big Paul Azinger fan. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that, you know, because you I don't say whatever you want because I don't give a shit. But uh, that, I, that's what I've decided. That was your, okay, perfect. Yeah. So you're not going to be Paul Azinger. I didn't yeah. see it taking that uh, turn there either. from magic not, you know, to. But so so, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm going to say. I'm going to say. Gosh. I thought you were going to be Johnny Miller for a day. Okay, Johnny Miller for John a day with 63. the 63 at okay, Oakmont. Because I played Oakmont, and I shot about 93 on that course. It was tough. Yes. Yeah, very tough course. Right, so, yeah, Johnny, Johnny Miller, Miller the 63, 60, at, 63 Oakmont. at Oakmont. You can talk about it for the rest of your life after you do that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you one here. I was told, I don't even know the answer to this, but I was told that you would know what I'm talking about. Okay, so tell me about your rookie year when you asked Rick Sutcliffe where the batting oh, cages gosh. were against the St. Louis Cardinals. That, that's a long story. Um 
I'll try to keep it as short as possible. <laughs> this is um, going to be a four hour episode. Just yeah. give it all to us. <laughs> um, I want it. So I've been in the big leagues for like a week. And it's raining at Wrigley Field. And it's going to rain all day. Really good chance that uh, this is going to be a rain out. Suckliff is pitching that day. And we, you, you go down in the locker room and on the, on the bulletin board, you know, hitting in the cages. You know, you, we're not going to hit on the field. It's raining. So hitting in the batting cages. Well, I've only been in the big leagues a week. I have no idea where the batting cages are at Wrigley Field. So they, they happen to be under the right field bleachers at this time. I didn't know that. Yeah, so, so there's not many people around. Sutcliffe's listening to his earphones, and on the day Sutcliffe pitched, he didn't like anybody bothering him. You know, just don't talk to me. I'm getting ready, you know, and all that. So I, I didn't know this. I've been in the big leagues a week. I didn't know this either. <laughs> so, so he's sitting there minding his business with his, with his earphones on, listening. He loved country music. He's listening to his country music. So I'm tapping him on the shoulder like an annoying <laughs> prick. And – Sure enough, he looks up with this disgusted look on his face at me, takes his, takes his earphones out of his ears, and is like, what? I said, Sut, you know, I, I see that we're in the same group hitting in the cages. I don't know where the batting cages are. Where are the batting cages? He's like, kid, I'm not going to hit today. He said, but, and this, I can see the light bulb go off in his head, and he's going to fuck with me. And <laughs> so... So he's, he's like, now, mind you, they're under the right field bleachers. All you do is walk, walk down to the dugout, walk across the field to the right field bleachers. There's a door there. Boom. He tells me to go back up into the concourse, take a left, and start walking. He goes, when you, and I remember this like it was yesterday. When you think you've gone too far, keep walking. So I'm like, okay. And he goes, you're going you're gonna to come to an old-style beer stand. That's a big beer in Chicago, old-style. And he goes, right, right next to that old-style beer stand, there's a, there'll be a door with a security guard. Those are the batting cages. I'm like, okay. So now it's a rain out. The people are not sitting out in the rain. They're in the concourse. You know, they're, they're, they're not out in the rain. They're smart enough to, to, to not get rained on. So... I've got a couple of bats. I'm wearing, you know, gray 17 uniform walking, and I'm wearing, I'm wearing my cleats. And, you know, cleats on cement, yeah. you, you, you guys wore cleats. You know what it's like to walk on a cart path or whatever. So it's making that sound. And so I'm, I'm walking, hey, Grace, uh, hey, how you doing? Just going to take a little batting <laughs> practice, you know? I'm, I'm walking, and, and I'm great. walking, and I'm walking. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is a long ways. Oh, yeah, that's right. If you think you've gone too far, keep walking. Okay. Well, man, about 50 yards later, I'm like, oh, my God, there's this old-style beer stand, and sure enough, there's a door with a security guard. I'm like, oh, God, okay. So I go to the security. He doesn't know who the hell I am. You know, I'm been around for nothing and i said i said hey need need to get in there and this guy looks at me like i'm from venus he's like looking at me he's like all right well he opens the door and i go down a couple flights of stairs and there's a coach for the st louis cardinals named red shandies and he sent me to the visitor's clubhouse. <laughs> he sent me to the visitor's clubhouse at Wrigley Field. And my dumb ass, I didn't, I'm like, I thought they were using the batting yeah. cage. You know, the visitor's using the batting I'm like, oh, you know, hey, Mr. Shandy's, uh, you know, you guys still hitting? And he looks at me and he says, I don't know who the hell you are, kid, but somebody got you good. You're in the Cardinals <laughs> clubhouse. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. So... Now I'm double timing back, you know, you know, I'm going and everybody, hey Grace, what are you doing over there? You know, I just want to see you, buddy. <laughs> so so now now I, I get back, I finally get back to the to the clubhouse, you know, the Cubs clubhouse, and I go down and like my like an idiot, green idiot that I am. I'm like, I go up to suckle. Like, Very good. You got me good. Now, really, where where's the batting cage? And he 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 could have sent me 
to the Sears Tower and I would have probably gone. But he was nice enough to finally just say, you know what, here, go wow. over there. And, Love that. and th it was a rain out anyway. Like it, we yeah. never played the game, he, but he got me good. And that's how, like I said, that's how stupid I was and young I was. I love that. I love so, this Rick Sutcliffe. He's yeah, great. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I actually met Rick Sutcliffe way back in the day. He was uh, in, big into horses. Big into horses. Yeah, my stepdad owned Outside a horse ranch. Kansas City, yeah. Yeah, my, my stepdad owned a horse ranch, so he actually came to our ranch one time. So, yep. so my, my, my Sutcliffe story. I shouldn't have said anything. Have God you, damn it. We're going to be here forever. Have you, have you ever been to a game in Cincinnati, Ohio? <laughs> that, that was one of the questions. Okay. Have you, you would ever I, go there. I, I, beat, I beat you to the punch. That's fine. So Sutcliffe's pitching in, in Cincinnati. And anytime a Cincinnati Red hits a home run in Cincinnati, they shoot off fireworks. So Eric Davis is up for, for Cincinnati, and he hauls off and blasts one into the second deck. Boom, 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 fireworks. Da, 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 and, and boom. So, so, you know, rounds the bases, you know, everybody high five, high five. The very next hitter is a guy named Paul O'Neill when he played for the Reds. Paul O'Neill, the very next pitch, hauls off and blasts one just as far into the right field bleachers. Boom, 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 boom. Da, 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 da. And back to back pitches, back to back fireworks. So, so our pitching coach decides to come out. His name was Billy Connors. He was kind of a rotund guy. And Sutcliffe, once again, that was his mound. You know, don't don't come near him. Don't talk to him. So. So of course, you know, so you fat son of a bitch, you know, and, and get your ass back in the dugout. Yeah, I gave up a couple fucking home runs, you know. And this is all before Billy Billy Connors even gets to the mound. He's just screaming at him. And Billy finally gets to the mound. He goes, he goes, Rick, I know you got everything taken care of. He goes, I just wanted to come out here and give that guy running the fireworks a little more time to reload. <laughs> And, oh, and walk off the and walk off the mound. And that was the meeting on the mound, the best meeting on the mound I've that ever been a part of in my life. That is great. So that good. guy a little more time to reload. Oh. <laughs> because, oh. because, my face oh. hurts. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what did you do when he's oh, I, blew, I just I, laugh. I blew a snot bubble. Yeah. I went, That's what I'm doing. Right yeah, now. yeah. Oh, no, I, I blew a snot oh, bubble. Oh shit. Yeah. So, 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 so. I just want to give him time to reload. <laughs> so needless to say, they're not always talking strategy on those mound visits. Best mound visits. Oh, that is part. fantastic! Oh, God. They got a fire warning in one of the oh, one exactly. of the forests nearby. Just going to give him a chance to put that out before you throw another hanging curve. That's great. Right. All right, next oh, one. Who's where are we at? Uh, it's my turn. Oh fuck! All athletes go through struggles. You know, I mean, we go through missed cut streaks and all this. Right. Y'all tend to go through some slumps during your right. career. How'd you get through a slump? <laughs> Well, Any sort the, of the, the, slump, the slump buster story goes back, goes back to Jim Rome. Uh, shoot, I probably did that interview about 1993. Phenomenal. And, and, you know, I'm glad it was 1993 because I think if you do that, if you do okay, that. Okay, we don't have to talk you about it. That, you want to roll the day, dice here and see how it is? age, I think, uh, I think you could get in. A lot, right, of, a lot of trouble. We'll just skip um, that one. Go watch the Jim yeah, Rome interview in 1993. Just, just pull it, pull it up. It's not hard to find. Yeah. Did you coin the phrase though? Slump no, Buster? no. That's okay. a, that's an it's an old we'll clear thing that's been around. No, I was just the first one that had the balls to, to, to go, say it on, to national, go on radio. national radio. Yeah, with with <laughs> with Rome, with Jim Rome, who at that time you know he, he had a huge following, still does, but. But yeah, so okay, I kind of so know yeah, where you're the, going so with there, this. So there's such a thing as, yeah. as a slump buster. There's a way you can get we'll just through. Just say it if my number willing. two was the Sutcliffe story. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so I, that too. Yeah. I don't know how we're gonna get to it. Uh, I don't even know where I'm at here. I, I'll give you one. Former teammate Sammy Sosa hit some hit some dingers in his day. When yes. did you first notice Sammy Sosa forgetting how to speak English? <laughs> <laughs> he speaks fine English. Oh, you don't say. I, I saw it in front of Congress. Oh yes. yeah, I you saw, saw it in front that? of Congress. Yeah. So all of a sudden, he, he forgot spoke it, and then he English. forgot it, and then yeah. he got it again. Then he, yeah, That's he, weird. exactly. Yeah, he he speaks plenty of good English. Okay, that was just a little yeah. weird. Brief amnesia yeah, yeah, there for him in front of <laughs> exactly. Congress. That and, was weird. and that's uh, I I I like I like that you went there. Because, okay, uh, thank you. Because uh, Sammy and I played a long time together and loved him until he hit sixty six home runs. Wow! And then, then it got bad. Then yeah. Then then he 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 wasn't he wasn't as lovable after that. Uh, but you know. 
changed up a little Guy bit. Got hit 600 home He's runs. changed physically, you know? too. No, oh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, yes, he did. <laughs> call no, all right, let's call it off. But he looks different. The guys, yeah, like, he looks fame a lot gets different. to a guy. Well, we talked earlier about some of the great golf courses you played. Augusta National, mm -hmm. you're making a trip to St. Andrews in May, from yes. what I hear. Yes. But I want to talk a little bit about the wind at Cypress Point. I heard you and the wind didn't quite see eye to eye at Cypress Point. That damn well, wind. Colt, you've probably, both you guys have probably played there, and it was blowing hard, okay. <laughs> like 40 to 50. I, wind is not my friend on the golf course, especially when it's right in your face and you're teeing off, well, I I put a little side spin on one, guys. A uh, little slice spin. I, I like to call it a fade, but it was slice spin. And and it went straight up in the air, and the wind got it with a slice, and it landed almost behind me. With driver? <laughs> with driver. With driver. <laughs> with driver. It, it landed almost behind me. Uh, it, it, bad time to, to, to hit one of those high flares. What left. hole was it? Uh, it was on the back nine. It was a. It was probably the first par three there on the coast is what, 15? 15, yeah. Yeah, 15, 16. It was cool. either 14. 14 uh, up the hill. Up the hill. Yeah, that was it. Cool yeah. That was it. But, hey, that's a cool hole to do it on if you're going to hit a negative yeah. yard drive. Yeah, uh, and and <laughs> unfortunately, that's a true story. You've talked to B.O.B. That's yeah. what you're I don't reveal hey, my no, sources. No, no, dude. We're journalists, bro. Yes, we yes, don't, yes. We don't, nobody's journalist, name yes. will be mentioned. So, so yeah, that's a that's a true story. It it was actually maybe five feet forward, but it, fully airborne. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a ground ball like with the seven iron. I was about to say which one went for that or the yeah, seven. The piece? The seven went further. The seven oh, piece my. batted at least five yards. <laughs> well, okay, I hit pretty, the, I and on the it hit cart the cart path. path. That's it would have gone further without further. that. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll give you an easier one here. What's the most enjoyable time to have a sig back in the day? Pre game, post game. Or during the game, all of the above. No, all of them. Yeah. Okay. Were you uh, in the dugout ripping darts? No, you're not allowed to. If you're, if you're, you're now, mind you, I you smoked. I smoked when I played. I quit smoking. Uh, I quit smoking after I was done. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't? Yeah, it? time to tighten but, up. But the the funny thing is, in 1988, my rookie year, when I got to the big leagues, I was one of the few guys on the team that didn't smoke. Every, everybody smoked. It was part of it. Yeah, different area. By, by the time I left the game 16 years later, maybe me and another guy were the only guys that smoked. So, you know, obviously these guys take such better care of themselves than we did. And that's why they're bigger, stronger, and faster and doing these amazing things. But the only place I'll ever have a cigarette now is on the golf course. I quit 20 years ago. And I don't crave them anywhere. You know, laws have been passed. You can't smoke in a restaurant or a bar. You know, and I'm, I'm not going to be one of those sad asses that stand outside of a bar or a restaurant. Sad you know, asses. And I'm not going to. You know, We're in one and, of the rooms at the I'm, airport. And I'm not going to go outside and smoke at my own house. It's my house. But I just, I don't, I don't crave them. But on the golf course, I'll have, I'll have a handful. All right. Still. Uh, do you guys, you guys ever smoke? Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. Smart. Yeah. Stay that way. No. I dipped. Not enough shit. Yeah. Stay that way. Don't worry about. I dipped. Yeah. I dipped once when I was fourteen and puked my face off. Never did it again. Did Everyone the pukes the first time. I, I don't know how we get thing. to the second. Put yeah. a put a Copenhagen in. Yep. San Diego State. Baseball was cool to have a a ten in your yep. back pocket. You know. So here, Gracie, try it. You know. I put it put a dip in, and within thirty seconds, yep. I puked right in the dugout. And <laughs> they're like. Well, that always happens. Don't worry about it. I'm like, what is, what is this, black tar heroin? What are we talking about? <laughs> so so after the nausea, you remember what a nasty oh. nausea that was, a tobacco <clears throat> nausea? So about three days later, like, ah, try it again, Grace. You'll, you, it'll be better this time. Okay, I'll try it. Put it in. And they were right. It, it, it was better. It only took me about 30, a minute and 15 30, seconds for him to get in the dugout. So I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not me. Yeah. Now, leaf tobacco? You know, like red that man. Stuff's like I can sweet. I, I can do that, but I, I can't do the snuff stuff. Yeah. It's just can't way more it. obnoxious to have that stuff yeah. in your mouth. It's Agree. Just, it's everywhere. All Agree. right. Next one. The great George Brett says there's two types of people in the world. Those who have shit their pants and those who haven't yet. <laughs> Where do you stand <laughs> on this? I'm on the former. <laughs> yeah. Maybe at Wrigley Field one time? <laughs> at Wrigley Field one time, yes. I, God, there's so many good I, ones. The shit your pants. We went on a run where maybe 12 guests in a row all had shit your pants. Yeah, stories. everyone's poops. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, everyone's poops. There's a book yeah. about it for yeah, kids. Yeah, I did, and... Uh, it was it was below average. Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, had to 
had to change out and were you on the field when this I happened? I was on the field playing first base when I did it. And, <laughs> you know, hell, we've all we've all done it. You know, yeah. we go to fart and you shit your pants. And, <laughs> and they, yeah, I did. And so I'm out on the field, and I can feel gravity bringing it south. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you're in the home whites. They're in the whites. Yeah, we're in the home whites. Oh, yeah, no. that's so I've got, I've got that dastardly brown spot back there. <laughs> did, and did Grace slide today? Nope. Nope, didn't no. slide. <laughs> no, Grace looks like he shit his pants. Field must be muddy. Yeah. So so anyway, I, the, by the grace of God, the, the, the inning ends, and I'm due up third in the bottom of the inning. So I tell the bat boys, guys, let me know what's going on out here because I shit my pants. I got to go change. <laughs> and and so I get to my locker and I drop trow, and it is everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's not just a little, you know, it's it's like it's in my socks. It's in my socks. It's, it's everywhere. So I'm not going to be able to just towel off and throw the towel away. I've got to go get in the shower and clean up. And... As I'm in the shower, the bad boy comes. <laughs> the, the bad boy comes out and he's like, "Grace, you're on deck. You're on deck, dude." I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm, I'm in the shower cleaning all this shit off me." And I can't breathe. So now, I I dry off. I dry off. I'm sitting there naked at my locker, and I've got to put an entire uniform back on. And it, 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 there's a lot to put on a baseball uniform. So, you know, I got new socks. I shit through my jock. I've just, just everything. So, so Grace, you're up. You're up. And our manager was Jim Riggleman. And I said, I said, tell Riggs to go buy me some time. I'll be right out there. So I got to put my entire uniform on, you know, back on. And it takes me at least a couple, three, four felt like forever and so i'm running back through the tunnel and i, I run out in the dugout and the wrigley faith are just going ballistic just loving life and jim riggleman and the home plate umpire are nose to nose arguing just nah, 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 just screaming at each other so i get out on deck and riggleman peeks behind him and he sees that i'm out there and he's done arguing, and he walks off to a standing ovation. The Wrigley faithful are just like, oh, Riggleman, way you showed that umpire. Woo, Riggleman, way to go. Come to find the argument kind of went like this. Nose to nose, my manager goes up to the umpire and says, you're not going to believe this, but my fucking first baseman just <laughs> shit his pants. <laughs> And I got to come out here and buy you time. And the umpire buys right in. His name was Jerry Crawford. Buys right in. He's like, are you fucking shitting me? They shit is bad. You know, and, and, but their nose, no, they are faking an argument. That is they're bad. faking an argument. And, and, and that was all it was, was a oh. fake argument. So, so, of course, I get up to bat. And Darren Dalton, the late Darren Dalton, was catching for the Phillies. And the home player, and they're, they're looking at me like, you shit your pants, you idiot. And, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so I make my out. And, yeah, make my and, out. And I, I go out to first base, and the visitor's dugout is first base dugout. So, of course, you know, Dalton has gone in and told all his teammates that Grace shit his pants. So, now, within five minutes of standing out there on defense, here come the toilet paper rolls from the, oh, from the first no. base dugout. Yeah, they're 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 holding up depends and stuff <laughs> like that. I mean, it's coming flying out of the dugout. So, moral of that story is: next time you see an umpire and a manager going at it, it might not be because God, the umpire that blew a great. call. That's all yeah. time by that ump. Yeah, yeah. to yeah. go along he, with he it. He bought right in. What he, a and dude. he was a great. Oh, guy. He, yeah. he's a great guy and a good umpire. He's no longer. He's he's retired, but a great guy. I, say, I know and, that and name. Yeah, he would have been he would have been the only guy. To to go buy along it like that, yeah. that and go along with it and buy me time because nose if, to nose, love yeah, that. Yeah, you so, got to be shitting me. He shit his pants. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> great shit his pants. Uh, oh, uh, and he had to shower. Oh, yeah. uh, oh god! I feel like we should end. That's a tough one to top, but I think I got one that is at least in my in my uh, opinion going to be pretty good. Give me the standard protocol as a first baseman when you take a trip to the mound and you can and you notice that your pitcher is um, visibly. <laughs> aroused <laughs> oh so you know okay so wait, it's true wait wait, wait. I, I didn't okay. know if this was even true okay. it's close I, I didn't go to the mound because i noticed but he okay. was he was just well, you do it he greg met the great greg maddox yeah uh, one of the greatest pitchers of all time in the argument for best ever well he throws a pitch and he's kind of you know he's kind of acting like 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 
he pulled a groin or something like that. <laughs> and, you know, that was our bread and butter guy, Greg Maddox. So I run, I run to the mound. I, you know, Mad Dog, you okay? He goes, great, stand in front of me. I'm like, are you okay? He goes, just fucking stand in front of me. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what's the problem? He goes, I got a heart on. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I'm the wrong dude to tell that. Okay, because because he, he goes, just stand right there. And I just looked at him. I'm like, you just love pitching, don't you? <laughs> and, and I run back. And, of course, you know, once the inning's over, I go in and I tell every one of my teammates, you know, you're not going to believe about that meeting on the mound. And so, but that is, once again, I wasn't giving him any advice. He wasn't giving me any advice. He These just, meetings he are just, all bullshit. He just needed me to stand in front of him. Do you think he wanted to look at you to get rid of it? No, also? That, that's a, that's a <laughs> look at me in the eye real quick. <laughs> no, no, you, you, ever want my, you, you ever want my old lady to get turned off? Just have her look at me. Oh, exactly. my God. I mean, what was, how did that get caused? Was that a medical uh, I, slip up? I, I or was that just he loves like throwing I said, strikes? I just, I just love think he loves pitching. God, he loves damn. getting guys out. Um, God all bless right. him. So that story was true. I, read, I was like, I didn't know. That's then you're the only story. way to confirm it. Holy and, shit. And then I'll give you my last short story. So we remember the great. I still have one question. We, we remember the yeah. great Tommy Lasorda, right? One uh -huh. of the best. Yes. One of the best rags I ever got. Lasorda. Lasorda's always pissed off in the first base dugout at Wrigley Field. Just pissed off, screaming at everybody. And so <laughs> I called. I, I know you and. and Still, you know, Drew, you guys know that I'm. I was not a speed was not a big part of my game. I was, you know, I was a slow ass. So, so I, I get a, I get a hit to hurt the Dodgers, and Tommy's screaming at me, and he, he tells me, Grace, you're so fucking slow. If you raised a pregnant lady, you'd come in third. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. one Never heard that one. One of the best one-liners yeah, I've ever yeah. gotten. I, usually I'd tell Tommy, go fuck yourself, Tommy. But I looked at him, I was like, that was pretty good. Yeah, was I, I, gave, I gave him credit on that one. Uh, all right. Last one. I'm going to let you put your drink down before I ask this. Um, do you think Halle Berry ever rode Space Mountain? Uh the answer is if you if you watch the thirty for thirty with uh, Ric Flair, the answer is yes. What is this? I don't even know. I was just told to ask this. Okay. And he said you'd laugh for an hour. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, one of the do you ever watch thirty for thirty on? Yes. Yeah, yeah, every time. Okay. Have you seen the Ric Flair one? Yes. Okay, it's one of the, it's unbelievable. This guy was just a freaking mess, <laughs> and and he was one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. You know, he's out there doing all those tricks and all, and he's got. 40 beers in him, you know, doing all this stuff. He's, he's telling, he's just coming out being honest. And he also was talking about, you know, it was almost like Wilt Chamberlain-esque with yeah. all the women yeah. he's bedded in his, in his lifetime. So they, the, the interviewer asked him, you know, something, something, you know, just talking about all the, all the women he's quote unquote had. And he said, he came out and he says, yeah. And just, just want to let you know that, Halle Berry rode Space Mountain, and <laughs> uh, not my Space Mountain, but yeah. Ric Flair Space Mountain. So, so that's kind of a that's kind of become a thing, you know. Talk, having sex is riding Space Mountain. So, oh, gotcha. So that's that's what I have that, no okay, idea. It makes more sense. That, 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 Ric Flair over. got Halle Berry. That's yeah. How about that? Wow. That's, that's, how about that's that? That's my queen. Uh, are, 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 I was gonna say. That's are, are you a depressing way to end this are, fucking are, interview, but are, are we all just, jealous <laughs> together? Yeah. Pissed in my Cheerios. <laughs> Sorry, Slee. I didn't know that's how it was going. I have to find a new one. J Lo, you're up. <laughs> Mark Grace, incredible, my man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Are awesome. And good luck with this thing. It's great. All right, well, that was the legendary Chicago Cub, Mark Grace, joining us on Golf Subpar. I mean, I haven't laughed that hard since an interview with Mike Commodore. But, I mean, I've been on the road the last couple of weeks. I have told more Mark Grace stories from this podcast than anything I can ever remember, and people just die laughing. We talked with him for 90 minutes, and the guy that won the World Series, we didn't even mention the didn't World Series one time. And I wouldn't want to. If we had another hour and a half with him, the World Series is about 38th on my list of shit I want to talk to Mark Grace about. How about the one? <laughs> I'm glad he confirmed this, because I'd read it a few times, and I'd heard some stories, but I didn't know. Like Things go around the internet. When he walks off from first base, I have a little conference at the mound, and you got your star pitcher there, Greg Maddox, and you walk up, and the dude's chubbed up. And you're like, uh, what do you do? as a, How do you talk him through that? How are we doing, bud? Everything good? You got a little I figured that'd be residual be Cialis going on? Well, you just don't see it a whole lot. There's a lot of baseball games out there. I can't uh, remember the last time I saw a pitcher chubbed up on the mound, but that's a dude that loves pitching. 
He continued the streak of great shitting your pants stories with baseball players mm-hmm. and and Ray Whitney. We'll throw him in there as well. But that was fantastic how the the ump just played along, got in a fake argument with the manager to stall a little. Yeah, longer. what a guy! Uh, the Rick Sutcliffe, the fireworks. That's my favorite just one. Give my man a little time to reload out there. <laughs> yep. And Harry Carey. I mean, I'm starting to. You know, there's that list of people you wish you could hang out with once in your life. Harry Carey's going up and up and up on my list. Oh, dude, the stories that I've heard about him that we didn't even get into. Some I'm sure are fake, some are real. Like, he's one of one. They don't make him like that anymore. And just like Gracie was mentioning, like, you can't get away with the no. stuff he was saying anymore. You should try to try it, though. Test the water. She throw, kissed him on the balls. <laughs> throw some of those out there and see how they go over. I feel like we're, we're the pendulum swinging back now. Well, he's a legend. We're going to have to do another episode because, like you said, we, we didn't even get to the second half of his career. No, dude, all the old school athletes, whatever sport it is, hockey, baseball, once they're like, dude, it's just a different era back in the day when things were great and you could do do some stuff and they got the best stories yeah. in the world all right well it's time to make everyone out there some money with our guys over at FanDuel step up to the tee and take a swing at betting the PGA Tour on FanDuel Sportsbook right now new customers can place their first PGA Tour bet risk-free and if you don't win you'll get up to $1,000 back if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel there's no better time to get in on the action the app's extremely easy to use there's a range of betting options like outright winners head-to-head matchups nationality props and so much more and when you win slays what happens dos oras Two hours. That's how fast. Get Spanish, paid fast. But, yeah. All right. Well, we're on to one of the most unique events on the PGA Tour, the Zurich Classic, a team event, which is very, very exciting. We got some stacked teams. Colin Morikawa, Victor Hovland, Patrick Cantlay, Xander Schauffele, Ryan Palmer, recruiting better than Nick Saban out there, has Scotty Scheffler, the Masters champion. I did the math. Okay. I mean, it's unreal. This is his fifth appearance. He's played twice with Jordan Spieth. He's played twice with John Rahm. I went back. And I looked at their current ranking leading into the event. The average ranking of his partner now with Scotty being number one is four point six. If you're outside the top five, don't even don't think even, of teaming up with don't Ryan even text Palmer. Ryan Perish Palmer. the thought, bud. Get somebody else. But they are not the favorite. No. V- Victor Hovland. Victor Hovland and Colin mm-hmm. Morikow are the favorites, followed by Xander Shoffley and Patrick Cantley. But this one's a lot of fun. I um, love this one. Two days of best ball, two days of alternate shot. I've had the pleasure of playing with the legend Boo Weekly there before, playing mm. with Ricky Barnes. It's it's fun. I'm actually heading down there on Wednesday. I'll be on the coverage this weekend, but let's get to it. Let's make some picks here, Sleaze. Fire it off. Who you got? Who's your top tier? Well, I'll tell you top what, my, my, my favorite bet, and they're going off at 20, 28 to 1, is Max Homa and Taylor Gooch. I think you got to have great team camaraderie in this event. Got to have a lot of fun. Both guys. I've been playing fantastic over the last year. They're really good friends. Play a lot of practice rounds together. I look for them to do th- do some very good things. Among the favorites, though, I'm looking at a team that's 13 to one. Another guy that's been extremely hot over the last year, Sam Burns, paired with Billy Horschel, who's won it at TPC New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, Billy Horschel's a team guy. He loves this stuff. He's a rah rah. He is. I expect them to to play very well. They're my favorite. But if I'm looking to make money, 28 to one. Gooch and Homa. Okay, Gooch Homa. Uh, I like that pick. By the way, Burns going back with the you know Louisiana native, going back to his old stomping grounds. More down or the less. Bayou. Yeah, exactly. He'll be very very comfortable down there. I looked at this, and there was a number of ways. It was hard for me to not pick the defending champs with Cam Smith, Mark Leishman. Almost went that way, but then I started thinking, I don't want to overthink this. There's a team there with Xander Schauffele and Patrick Cantlay on the same team. Two golfing machines that don't suck at anything. They're great at everything. They love each other. They play gin for 17 hours on plane flights. They're best friends in the world. And they're both, they're the same dude. They hit it great. They putt it great. They chip it great. How do I not pick them? It'll be one of those weeks where if I didn't pick them and they won, I'd be like, I'm an idiot for not picking them. So I'm going to go with them. They're going off at eight to one. That's Xander Schauffele and Patrick Cantlay. If you go down the board just a little bit, some ball strikers. I think you need great ball strikers, obviously. I just think you can lean on that. An alternate shot, the easier you can make it. Fairway green, the more you can do that, the easier it gets. I'm going 36 to 1. I think this team's, they're not sneaky because they're big name guys, but Will Zalatoris, Davis Riley yeah. going off in that group. Zalatoris, by the way, putted it really nice at the Masters. He made some like 8, 10 footers, the ones you're not used to seeing him hoop. The stroke looked a lot better. Davis going to get to hit half of them more or less when they do alternate shot. And then you know what Will's going to do T to green. I think that team at 36 to 1, dangerous. I was a little surprised by their odds. Obviously, we haven't seen Will Zalatoris. He played he played well at the Masters, but as of late, the results quite, haven't been quite where we're used to. Davis Riley, kind of hot or cold. Um, but like you said, team format and this this thing is won and lost in the alternate shot format 100 I mean, percent. a lot of all these guys you know you can get away with one guy being off in the best ball format on thursday and saturday but alternate shot 
you got to bring it. If there's a screw loose, it's going to show up out there. And Zal Torres, like, he just set the bar so high right when he came yeah. out. It was just top 20, top 20, top 20 over and over that we're like, oh, he'll do that for forever. It's just not the case. The putter's been a little shaky, but I love what I saw at Augusta. And I just think those two guys, their camaraderie too, their freaking roommates, you know, they're going to have a – I, I don't know. At 36 to 1, yeah. I, I like the odds. It's worth there. a dabble. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so go low this summer and bet on the PGA Tour. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and sign up using promo code SUBPAR to get your first bet risk free up to $1,000. Remember to use our promo code SUBPAR to get this special offer today. FanDuel Sportsbook, official betting operator of the PGA Tour. Must be 21 years older and present in select states. First online real money wager only refund issue does not withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. Call 1 800 522 4700 in Colorado. 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org chat in Connecticut. 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com RG in New Jersey, Iowa, in Illinois. 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY 467. 369 in New York or 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Or just every state could agree that gambling is legal and I don't have to do that anymore. Or just sack up and win bets and you don't have a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just throw some smart money down and you don't have to call anybody. Well, Sleaze, we normally don't give a tease, but we got to give a little tease this week because when I mention the name Chris Vernon, I don't think a lot of people might know who that is. Not right off the top. However, there's a catchphrase that if you mention, they're going to immediately know. What, what is it? Do it. What's going on at Augusta? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. We're pretty gonna have good. a little competition, work on it. but the man behind what's going on at Augusta is gonna join us. This guy is a character. I cannot wait to interview him. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and we'll show it to you on next week's Golf Subpar.